Hi guys, today we're going to be reading Pathoma Chapter 1, Growth Adaptations, Cellular Injury, and Cell Death. Growth Adaptations Basic Principles An organ is in homeostasis with the physiologic stress placed on it. An increase, decrease, or change in stress in an organ can result in growth adaptations. Hyperplasia and Hypertrophy an increase in stress leads to an increase in organ size, occurs via an increase in size, hypertrophy, and or the number of cells, hyperplasia. Hypertrophy involves gene activation, protein synthesis, and production of organelles. Hyperplasia involves the production of new cells from stem cells. Hyperplasia and hypertrophy generally occur together, for example, uterus during pregnancy. Permanent tissues, for example, cardiac muscle, skeletal muscle, and nerve, however, cannot make new cells and undergo hypertrophy only. For example, cardiac myocytes undergo hypertrophy, not hyperplasia, in response to systemic hypertension, which results in left ventricular hypertrophy. We have a figure here, figure 1.1, which is left ventricular hypertrophy. Pathologic hyperplasia, for example, endometrial hyperplasia can progress to dysplasia and eventually cancer. A notable exception is benign prosthetic hyperplasia or BPH, which does not increase the risk for prostate cancer. Atrophy. A decrease in stress, for example, decreased hormonal stimulation, disuse or decreased nutrients or blood supply leads to decrease in organ size, which is atrophy occurs via a decrease in the size of and number of cells. Decrease in cell number occurs via apoptosis. Decrease in cell size occurs via a ubiquitin protease degradation of the cytoskeleton and autophagy of cellular components. In ubiquitin protease degradation, intermediate filaments of the cytoskeleton are tagged with the ubiquitin and destroyed by proteasomes. Autophagy of cellular components involves generation of autophagic vacuoles. These vacuoles fuse with lysosomes whose hydrolytic enzymes break down cellular components. Metaplasia A change in stress on an organ leads to a change in cell type, metaplasia. Most commonly involves change of one type of surface epithelium to another, for example, squamous, columnar, or urothelial surface epithelium would be converting to another type. Metaplastic cells are better able to handle the new stress. Barrett's esophagus is a classic example. Barrett's esophagus. So this is talking about Barrett's esophagus. Esophagus is normally lined by non-keratinizing squamous epithelium suited to handle friction of a food bolus. Acid reflux from the stomach causes metaplasia to non-ciliated mucin-producing columnar cells better able to handle the stress of acid. Metaplasia occurs via reprogramming of stem cells, which then produce the new cell type. Metaplasia is reversible in theory with removal of the driving stressor. For example, treatment of gastroesophageal reflux may reverse Barrett's esophagus. Under persistent stress, metaplasia can progress to dysplasia and eventually result in cancer. For example, Barrett's esophagus may progress to adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. A notable exception is apocrine metaplasia of breast, which carries no increased risk for cancer. Vitamin A deficiency can also result in metaplasia. Vitamin A is necessary for differentiation of specialized epithelial surfaces, such as the conjunctiva covering the eye. In vitamin A deficiency, the thin squamous lining of the conjunctiva undergoes metaplasia into stratified keratinizing squamous epithelium. This change is called keratomalacia. Mesenchymal connective tissue can also undergo metaplasia. A classic example is myositis ossificans in which connective tissue within muscle changes to bone during healing after trauma. Here on the bottom we have a figure of Barrett's esophagus. And here we have a figure of keratomalacia due to vitamin A deficiency or myositis ossificans. 
dysplasia, disordered cellular growth, most often refers to proliferation of the precancerous cells. For example, cervical intraepithelioplasia represents dysplasia and is a precursor to cervical cancer often arises from long-standing pathologic hyperplasia, for example, endometrial hyperplasia or metaplasia, for example, Barrett's esophagus. Dysplasia is reversible in theory with alleviation of inciting stress. If stress persists, dysplasia progresses to carcinoma, which becomes irreversible. Aplasia and hypoplasia. Aplasia is failure of cell production during embryogenesis, for example, unilateral renal agenesis. Hypoplasia is a decrease in cell production during embryogenesis, resulting in a relatively small organ, for example, streak ovary in Turner syndrome. Cellular injury. Basic principles. Cellular injury occurs when a stress exceeds the cell's ability to adapt. The likelihood of injury depends on the type of stress, its severity, and the type of cell affected. Neurons are highly susceptible to ischemic injury, whereas skeletal muscle is relatively more resistant. Slowly developing ischemia, for example, renal artery atherosclerosis, results in atrophy, whereas acute ischemia, for example, renal artery embolus, results in injury. Common causes of cellular injury include inflammation, nutritional deficiency, or excess hypoxia, trauma, and genetic mutation. Hypoxia, low oxygen delivery to tissue, important cause of cellular injury. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain of oxidative phosphorylation. Decreased oxygen impairs oxidative phosphorylation, resulting in decreased ATP production. Lack of ATP, which is an essential energy source, leads to cellular injury. Causes of hypoxia include ischemia, hypoxemia, and decreased oxygen-carrying capacity of blood. Ischemia is decreased blood flow through an organ, arises with decreased arterial perfusion, for example, atherosclerosis, Decreased venous drainage, for example, Budd-Chiari syndrome, and shock, which is generalized hypotension resulting in poor tissue perfusion. Hypoxemia is a low partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. Partial pressure of oxygen is less than 60 millimeters of mercury, and saturated oxygen is less than 90%. Arises with high altitude, Decreased barometric pressure results in decreased partial pressure of oxygen. Hypoventilation, increased partial pressure of carbon dioxide results in decreased partial pressure of oxygen. And diffusion defect, partial pressure of oxygen not able to push as much oxygen into the blood due to a thicker diffusion barrier. For example, interstitial pulmonary fibrosis. VQ mismatch, blood bypasses oxygenated lung Circulation problem, for example, right to left shunt or oxygenated air cannot reach blood, which is a ventilation problem, for example, atelectasis. Decreased oxygen carrying capacity arises with hemoglobin loss or dysfunction, for example, anemia, which is decreased in RBC mass, partial pressure of oxygen normal, saturated oxygen normal, carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon dioxide binds hemoglobin more avidly than oxygen. Partial pressure of oxygen normal. Saturated oxygen decreased. Exposure includes smoke from fires and exhaust from cars or gas heaters. Classic finding is a cherry red appearance of skin. Early sign of exposure is a headache. Significant exposure leads to coma and death. Methoglobinemia. Iron in heme is oxidized to ferric ion, which ca cannot bind oxygen. Partial pressure of oxygen normal, saturated oxygen level decreased. Seen with oxidant stress, for example, sulfa and nitrate drugs or in newborns. Classic finding is cyanosis with chocolate-colored blood. Treatment is intravenous methylene blue, which helps reduce iron back to ferrous state. Reversible and irreversible cellular injury. 
Hypoxia impairs oxidative phosphorylation resulting in decreased ATP. Low ATP disrupts key cellular functions including sodium-potassium pump, resulting in sodium and water buildup in the cell, calcium ion pump, resulting in calcium ion buildup in the cytosol of the cell, aerobic glycolysis, resulting in switch to anaerobic glycolysis, lactic acid buildup results in low pH, which denatures proteins and precipitates DNA. The initial phase of injury is reversible. The hallmark of reversible injury is cellular swelling. Cytosol swelling results in loss of microvilli and membrane blubbing. Swelling of the rough endoplasmic reticulum results in the dissociation of ribosomes and decreased protein synthesis. Eventually, the damage becomes irreversible. The hallmark of irreversible injury is membrane damage. Plasma membrane damage results in cytosolic enzymes leaking into the serum, cardiac troponin, additional calcium entering into the cell. Mitochondrial damage results in loss of electron transport chain, inner mitochondrial membrane, cytochrome C leaking into the cytosol activates apoptosis, Lysosome membrane damage results in hydrolytic enzyme leaking into the cytosol, which in turn are activated by the high intracellular calcium. The end result of irreversible injury is cell death. Here on the bottom, we have three figures. One is coagulative necrosis of the kidney, which is a gross appearance. One is microscopic appearance, and this is the normal hi kidney histology compared to this one, which is the abnormal. Thank you guys, and if you want to read more of Pathoma with me, please watch my next video.